There are many cars that were known for being unreliable, such as the Ford Pinto, Maserati by Turbo, the Yugo, the DeLorean, and many more. For this build, I plan on build the most unreliable car that's drivable and isn't too bad that it won't sell at all. Hey guys, it's Trius here, and let's get on with our build. So with the panel material of this luxury type of sedan we got going here, let's start things off pretty much what most cars are built nowadays with the partial aluminum panel material with a monocoque chassis made out of regular AHS steel. Because this thing will be heavy once we drop the quality sliders and everything which you'll see later. So the engine placement, good old front longitudinal with the front suspension set to a double wishbone. And the rear suspension will be set to a multi-link because these are the most complex suspensions in the game per se in terms of reliability and all that stuff. And the quality sliders, like I said, negative 15 for everything. And for the sandbox tech pull, I'm also going to do this too. I'm going to drop the car tech, including the engine tech, I think it's at the zero right now. But the car tech for the sandbox tech pull, I'm going to put a zero for everything with the car itself. Same thing for the engine, which I already have created here. So for the engine, which I've already created, it's an inline-5 engine made out of aluminum with the bore set to an 82.5mm and the stroke set to a 92.8mm, which equals to 2,480 cubic centimeters, or about a 2.5 liters. And even with this engine, with the bore specs and all good stuff, this is based on Volkswagen's 2.5 liter inline-5 engine, hence the engine name, Volkswagen. Das Auto because this is the janky version of that 2.5. It it's a dual overhead cam 5 valve for the heads, also made of aluminum, hence it being a 20... Wait, it's a 25 valve, is this is right. And the crank car rods, pistons, and the balance of the mass, pretty basic. Cast crankshaft, heavy duty cast car rods and pistons, seeing that this is so unreliable. And a harmonic damper only for the balancing mass, not a balancing shaft to reduce the um, crankshaft torsion, vibration, all that good stuff. And for the compression, I think this is pretty much set to what it is in real life, a 9.2 to 1 compression. The cam profile set it to a, a, almost a full bone racing setting at a 92. Stiffen the springs as much as possible to 100, which drops the reliability. Same thing with having a VVT for the all cams with the RPM set to 6,000 RPM. For the fuel system, it's a mechanical fuel injection with a throttle, or er, yeah, throttle per cylinder set up with a racing intake with a manifold size set. It's kept it as is to a 50, so thank you for the fuel mapping and all good stuff. Runs on super fuel and for the headers and everything. Put some tubular mid headers and increase the header size to a 55 with the exhaust diameter set to a 69.8 millimeters or 2.75 inches. A catalytic converter, high flow three weight, double reverse flow to get the final power rating right here at exactly 154 horsepower at 5,900 RPM, and the torque at 156.7 pounds feet of torque at 4,600 RPM. And yeah, so like I mentioned about the reliability, this is currently the most unreliable engine in terms of automation, where it says that it is able to be sold at everything. Because if I were to increase the cam profile by just one click, you could see this little thing flash red at me, say that the engine's reliability is too low to sell. So since I want to sell this car, this engine and everything to the general automotive market, I might as well just keep this at a 92 and not have this thing yell at me for quality's sake and everything. And since I barely use inline 5 engines for my builds, let's get a listen to what it sounds like right here. So the car idles at 1600 RPM and doesn't have a very surprising or awe-inspiring red line at 6000 RPM. And the body quality before we get to the rest of specs of this car, put the body quality at a negative 50 which increases weight and decreases reliability and all that good stuff. So for the drivetrain of this bad boy, might as well choose a rear-wheel drive setup with an advanced automatic 8-speed with the top speed set, 120 would do. I mean, there's going to be negative 15 quality sliders, which will really reduce the top speed and all that good stuff. And put electric LSD because this also reduces reliability and everything. And of course, drop the quality with the rest of the build. And for the tires, let's choose the radial medium compound tires with the front tire whip since it's pretty much in the body and everything. Put these at a 225s up front and the rears, ooh, we got a little bit of go up in here. So let's increase this to a 245. Yeah, 245 will do. And for the brakes, let's complicate things by adding a carbon ceramic six piston with the size set. Let's just do 300 for now and carbon six 
240, I guess? And for the undertrade is bad boy, but let's pretend that we do have an undertrade for this build to drop the reliability and all that good stuff. So a racing diffuser with the cooling airflow all the way down to a zero. Same thing with the brake airflow, keep it at a zero. And quality, you know the drill, negative 15. So for the interior of this car, and since it's not going to be a true luxury car or a freaking Bentley or this or that, let's choose a handmade interior with a luxury CD player. I mean, either choosing a luxury CD or a sat nav, aka a GPS navigation system. This will not really reduce any of the reliability whatsoever between this system or the CD, even for a 2009 car. And for the driver's safety aids, all good stuff. Let's choose the variable hydraulic power steering with just ABS brakes only with advanced 2020 safety standards. Drop the quality. And interesting, optimize the weight to be lightweight as possible, even though this won't work that much at BMG Drive with the slider. And finally, for the suspension, let's choose the ones that I don't really use, especially for the springs, which is going to be a hydro pneumatic type of springs with just twin tube dampers and active sway bars. Let's do a normal preset to see where we're at. So currently, it's at an 8.1 for the reliability. Okay, 8.0 for the reliability. So I believe this is currently the lowest reliability car. Uh, more brakes, please. I want to say that I believe this is the worst reliability car ever at automation that is able to be sold in this game. So I still can't even get the reliability to an even lower value from an 8.0 up in here. I tried everything with just the car in general and, of course, the engine too. So I believe just a 5.0 with the engine and an 8.0 with the car in general is pretty much going to be the closest I can get. And 7.3 by just doing that? What did I do? So just playing around with the balance of mass. Okay, 5.4 there and back to 5.0 with the balance of mass. And going back to the car, it jumps to 8.7. How? I mean, the engine stats have been updated. Why not the rest of the car too? Okay, so it's still at a 7.3 somehow, even though I reset this back to a 5.0 for the engine. So it's a 5 for the engine, 3 for the car, but now it's down 7.3 from being at an 8.0, so that's kind of weird. So anyways, for this part of the video, I'll give you a time lapse portion to be try to build this car from the ground up with the front end portion, the sides, and of course the rear end. I'm not going to do an interior portion for this build because of how bad it is. So anyways, let's commence the time-lapse portion of this video right now. So for the design of this car, I first designed it off-camera, which took over four hours coming with this design that I'm doing right here. For the front, I used this oval grill fixture with lots of chrome trim pieces inside to loosely replicate the first-gen Chrysler 300C. The headlights slightly resemble the second gen Chrysler 300 with the turn indicators integrated into one of the headlights like the first gen 300. I also took the Chrysler wing badge and replaced the logo with the Axis A logo, which Axis is my American car brand, pretty much like most American car brands like GM or something like that. On the bottom of the bumper, I added a combo grille fixture with a pair of fog lights inside the side vents. I then finished the front off with the hood bulge, indent, and chrome fixtures similar to what Twin Turbros did with his luxury car released a couple of years ago. For the sides, there are already side view mirrors since this is a legacy car body that I've downloaded off the Automation Steam Workshop, so I added the turn indicators located near the front wheels, the door handles, the gas door, and eventually did the side reflectors located in the rear fenders by the back of the wheels. Now, for the back, I started with the license plate molding, which somehow flows well the body lines already defined with this car body. For the taillights, I added the reverse light at the bottom of the housing. Then, I added a thin red daytime running light in the middle, along with the brake lights and turn indicators. Finally, I repainted the car to this bluish looking color and added the car's branding on the trunk. So after getting everything done with this build, here's what it came out. This is the 2009 Axis Climax Platinum Package. This what should be an American luxury sedan isn't what it is. With a terrible inline-five engine and build quality, this car kind of sums up what some cars are like in today's era, but not at this level. Alrighty, so I finally got this luxury sedan, this wannabe Chrysler 300 type of build. It's definitely not a Chrysler 300. I mean, it's an Axis car that has the Chrysler wings on it. 
So anyways, before we export this piece of crap car, despite our only four problems that we got up in here, such as the low engine cooling factor, the pistons, crank, and car rods are experiencing some high levels of stress of RPM stress, let's jump on over to BMG Drive and drive this car. So here we are at the map of Italy with this wannabe Chrysler freaking Axis Climax that we got going here, and uh, what just, what's going on with the, uh, the indicators right here by the headlights? So I guess this was probably a bad idea to replicate a first-gen freaking 300 with the indicators, like, embedded in the headlights, which is showing part of the headlight right here. I guess back at Autobase, I had to, like, push these out away from the headlights to make this work. Especially when this becomes available in my Discord server, you can download this exact car in my Discord server once I fix this up, which I pretty much feel would fix it up pretty much right about now when this video is up. So anyways, despite that little screw-up, let's start off with our base performance test as I land myself up. We're gonna start off with the 0 to 62 acceleration test, followed by the 62 to 0 brake test, and I highly doubt it is gonna be doing a top speed run. So anyways, for the acceleration test, our 0 to 60 will commence now. Hit the gas while we do it very slowly as the tardy... Your two late car over there is stalled out in the middle of the road at... Over rev risk. Yep, you bet I had to with this crappy ass car. So 0 to 62 in 12.26 seconds of 685.71 feet. So that's pretty mediocre of pretty much like any type of car nowadays. So Mr. Van, let me illegally pass you so I can do the brake test in the left hand lane. Can I do so please? Alright, I passed the van driver so let's get ready to brake. Now, brakes, 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 and... 62 to 0 in 2.94 seconds of 127.14 feet, so in terms of distance and time-wise, I mean, it's okay in terms of the time, just under 3 seconds, and about almost 130 feet in terms of the braking distance. Seems fair. So for a top speed right already in effect, is my your 2 late car broke or something like that? My maximum bore minimum stroke V10 engine, which is a successor to my... No, not necessarily a successor, I'd... Yeah, you gotta get stalled out for some odd reason. I don't want to say it's like a successor, but a sequel to the Max Bore Minimum Stroke V8 that got like 50 or 60,000 views, which that's currently my most popular automation car build, automation BMG video ever on his channel, other than my near quarter of a million or over a quarter of a million Ultimate No Stress V8 or V12 or 16 engine that I released like just about a year ago from now. So we're about to be making this little slipping right-hander at this little exit before the tunnel. Watch out, cars! I'm doing a test here, so... No damage whatsoever with, like, the con rods or something like that, which is kind of interesting. I think I should probably drop the parameters to make it even worse, just for the hell of it. And top speed! We get the red line, so top speed! Damn, Audi wannabe, we get the top speed as we brush alongside the walls with the tire just minding its own business. Engine is off. What? Engine is off, hold the V button to turn it on. It's on, what do you mean? Can you please put this in park? So a brief look at the aftermath destruction vehicle, let's just pull this over, block the road up in here. I'll probably change, well first of all, before I do a time trial run, I'll probably change like the parameters to make the engine like actually overheat now, rather than just like, hey, it's over at risk. So look at the car, we got both the grill bars removed, basically like a basic Chrysler 300, and the car, tire missing, or structural damage, or structural integrity seems pretty, uh, pretty good, and that's it. So let me try to change the parameters of the engine and do a time trial run right this instance. So here we are at the map of Small Island USA, and for my time trial run I'm be doing here is to be one whole lap around the entire island, just simply called Island Loop. And hopefully with the new parameters of dropping like these cylinder walls or something like that, dropping it down from 300 degrees Celsius to 150 should probably do damage to the engine once it's redlined. So let's see if I made the right changes to this engine here. So let's get ready to start things off for time trial run. Three, two, one, go. That was a disappointing rev up because, well, this engine can't rev up whatsoever. God damn, look at the brake texture we got going here since these are carbon ceramic brakes. Let's see. Over rev risk. But there should be, like, damage to, like, the, like, engine torque reduced, pistons damaged, and stuff like that. It should probably read it sometime soon if I did do that right. Oh, no! That was a shocker! <laughs> well, let's do that again. 
And coming past the tunnel, I still don't have that little, like, cylinder wall damage or something like that yet with this car. I don't know if I actually did the parameters, like, what, what should I do? I mean, I went to the engine structure, the engine itself, like the Camso engine, engine structure or something like that with the hex code inside the car's zip file or something like that. I tried doing that, like, messing with the over, like, the, uh, the maximum RPM, the temperatures of the sidewalls and all that stuff, the threshold. Like, the durability threshold of my ball sack deflated in the front left. I thought I had enough clearance. Like, I messed with those parameters, like, I dropped it down by, like, a whole thousand whatever value or something like that. I said that we dropped the value for the threshold, and it seems like I still can't get it to, like, actually burn up and stuff like that. So we get a total time of 1 minute 46 seconds, uh, 229 milliseconds. If I would have been flawless, I'll probably be, like, a 145, but unfortunately, since I screwed up right there near the land, that ain't gonna happen, buddy. So let's do a free roam and crash to somewhere that's applicable. Let's see. Let's just go off-road and just tire burst, war over rev risk. Let's just over rev risk until we get something. Did I do this right? All right, valve train damaged, engine torque reduced, and I think I probably should have like dropped the RPM to like 5,000 RPM as where the engine will start damaging itself, not 5,500 RPM. So anyways, for the final part of the video, the final map we're going to is good old Brutal Soap 2.0 to see if this wannabe Chrysler 300 will compete like its real counterpart despite having an inline 5 engine and all that ordeal. So let's take it to the top of the ramp right now. So here I am at the top of the ramp on the far left portion of this map here. So let's accelerate this bad boy down the ramp to see if we get a better 0 to 62 time and over rev risk seconds and much better 4.57 seconds to 203.43 feet compared to the 13.57 seconds of 748.02 feet. Okay, a revgen is now dead. I want to say engine torque reduced and valve trade damage until boom that kicked in. So compared to 13 second and the 4 second time, it's exactly a 9 second difference as you can see there. So 200 miles an hour at the bottom, 140 mile an hour exit speed once I reach the end of the ramp. So the engine just started off oil as I face down. And let's try to do a roof impact right here. Slow this down. So here's a 32 times slow-mo of a roof impact at 140 miles an hour and I don't know mile an hour I was going in terms of airspeed. There goes all the chrome freaking trim pieces, the license plate, the more chrome trim pieces right there, this little line I think. So here's the car and full time. Uh, excuse me, full time. There we go. And we're still on a roof. Still on our roof as the engine of course as I blew it up at the ramp it's 100% dead and we got a Bend in the chassis. Okay, and the tires are spinning. I swear. What's it like landing the car with the tires spinning? Will it screech? Nope, it produced a little bit of tire smoke. And what the hell do we got going here? Some sort of like freaking iRobot type of like concept car or something. I mean, <laughs> I mean, we still got our four tires and everything, and a lot of the trim pieces and fixtures and the body itself is just bent up with a lot of loose polygons all over the vehicle, including the rear drivetrain too. Alright, final part I'm doing on this map is we're going to be accelerating as fast as I can. Skateboard at the top of the ramp, big time over rev risk, and see if I can get a high speed crash test going at this little wedge block, aka the person we call it the wedge thing, to get a high speed crash test with this car. So, are we going to get 200 miles an hour? Just like the ramp? Yep, 201 it is. Alright, 100 times slow mo. What's a POV crash like? Let's do 100 times, then 200 times. Got a POV crash going here into the wall. And there's the engine, the car, let's move the camera. Okay, is it gonna go all, all the way in? Nope, just stops at the rear passenger portion of the vehicle, so full time we go. Car goes that, trip pieces goes that for the grill and all that good stuff, so let's put this as a flatland and analyze the car from there. So here is the car with the rear end looks pretty good good up in here, except for the trashed up rear differential and the rear, like, the uh, drive shaft, all good stuff, the back portion of the transmission, some loose polygons with the chassis, or the suspension right here, and looking towards the front, I made, damn, this day got crunched up to the point where it became another, not say another roof and all good stuff, but it's been deformed to the point where the front passenger portion 
is pretty much just enveloping the back end of the car. And also, we did get a wedge shape like obtuse triangular look with this car. You can see with the side here, the front, oh boy, there's the engine, there's a tire that's in critical condition. And also about the car being critical condition, well, as you see, it's in terrible shape from that crash. So that'll do it with automation and BBG Drive with the Axis Climax Platinum. For a car that has the worst reliability that could be sold in automation, it performed okay in every aspect. It's not the best in acceleration, speed, cornering, and power. It's just a janky wannabe Chrysler 300 that shouldn't be on the road for how bad it is. And pretty much how this engine just breaks apart so easily from just like general driving use and all that good stuff. So pretty much this engine would probably last you like 5,000 miles or maybe less than that or something like that. It's probably my guess of how bad it is. And for those who are interested in this type of content, please be sure to like and subscribe so you won't miss out on any videos like this in the future. So this is Tries Rising Up, and signing out.